supposed to be there. We're supposed to hang out up here. Uh, annotate, spotlight, uh, light, and open bridge. Bridge launch. Okay. And uh, this week's homework was a uh, backlit session. That's week five. Doing week five here. Uh, was a backlit image. And I uh, showed you an example of that uh, last week when we, when we move forward, but what I'd ask you that you do is to kind of, uh, let's go full screen, uh, is to uh, uh, do a backlit image. And we were talking about lighting and the skill set here is we're trying to develop your ability to see lighting. Most people, most in, most photographers are only concerned about, you've heard me say this over and over again, they're only concerned about that they have enough light. But light is very critical uh, element or component to your imagery. If you don't know how to uh, to use it, I'm going to sound like I'm going to start from the negative. If you know how to use it, you can create uh, mood, you can create texture, you can create drama, you can create ambiance in your photograph. Uh, you can deliver an image that uh, people will understand and review read or, or see readily. They may not understand lighting, but they know there's something about the photograph that makes the image stand out. Uh, and backlighting, which was the assignment for this week, was to, well, well, you can use that from a product photography standpoint, as well as a, uh, as portrait photography. You can use, uh, you can use lighting uh, in any uh, sort of capacity. And in this case, we're using backlighting to have a subject appear to stand off of the background. Of course, the backgrounds were toned down using the software and uh, using the AI software in Lightroom. So it looks, it gives you kind of a three-dimensional uh, appearance to the image, if you would. Uh, and over time, as you learn how to use lighting, you learn to use the different, uh, different aspects. Product photography is based on a lot of backlight because you want to delineate your product. Uh, you can use it in portrait photography here, which is what we're using it here. Uh, and in this case, it's basically a product. If it's not really a portrait, it's basically a product because this is what's considered a senior uh, shot for uh, a, a yearbook or an annual or something of that nature. But that's what we're supposed to be doing with this week's uh, assignment is using backlighting and talk about how the lighting took place. And, uh, and again, all, using all of our rules. If I look at this, this is a uh, centered composition and symmetry. It is backlit. And there was something else, rule symmetry. Uh, yeah, uh, take, and this is basically a make type of shot. All I did was darken the backgrounds. It didn't change them that much, but just darken the backgrounds. So the question that arises, what's this take, make, or create? It is take, uh, I'm sorry, it's a make, because I'm manipulating uh, items in the photograph. Uh, the rule is center composition symmetry, and it is backlit. So that's kind of how what we look at going forward with your with your images. And uh, then I will adjust the next two weeks homework uh, to reflect some type of uh, uh, Black History Month theme. And again, excellent idea, Diane. I wish you'd seen it early. We could have uh, done this uh, all along. But here we go, going forward. And I'm just going through from uh, starting from the top and going through, to, through from top to bottom. So we'll start the first person up. I think that's going to be AJ Annie. And she calls this one Kiss and Pups. Uh, and the aspect resolution is 3 2. Uh, resolution 300 pixels per inch. Rule was to isolate the subject. Image uh, was a tape, and she was captured with a 78 millimeter. Uh, lens, uh, 5, 6, ISO 100, basic improvements were done in Lightroom, transferred image to Photoshop, and in Photoshop, clean the image using the spot erasure tool, dark around the edges with the burn tool, and the frame transferred the image out to original file and upload to the cloud. Okay, so those are steps there. And I've got people coming in, Jose's coming in. Okay, and uh, oops, I'm trying to get to, okay, and here's the image itself. Uh, with the uh, uh, the mat and frame around it, and these are the two puppy dogs, I guess, kissing pups. Uh, and uh, what, uh, and if you would take or create, what are you calling it? Well, I said it was a take. I didn't do too much to it. 
Okay, all right. And you may have done some make there. Okay. But uh, did you do anything in terms of taking the backgrounds out of focus? Oh, and I did do that. I did blur the bright brown some. Okay, so you into the make realm there. Yeah. Uh, and then this is backlit. You guys can see the light coming in from the rear. And if you were going to uh, uh, call it, how do you know this is real lit, Annie? And this, how, how do I know this is backlight? Because the shadows is in the front. Yeah. In the rim around the top. Yeah, well stated. That's what I wanted to say. You got shadows here. When you're doing your lighting, um, uh, when you're doing your, your lighting, uh, look for the shadow. The shadow will tell you exactly where the light is coming from. The light, the shadow will always be opposite the light. And use it uh, to your expression, if you would. Okay. All right. Take, make, create. Well, shit, this is a make. Uh, rule of center composition and symmetry. And actually, that's what it is. Uh, and then it is uh, perfectly back. Uh, and then she did some, some soft focusing with the back on the a little bit. Any questions to Annie as we go forward on her image? Okay. Yeah, what breed are those dogs? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no earthly idea. They, they are ceramic. <laughs> <laughs> they look like they might be yellow labs. <laughs> That's what they look like they might be. Only you can say something like that. <laughs> okay, let's go for it then, if we would. And this is from, oh. from Barrington. Uh, and we're looking at uh, take, make, or create Barrington. And I, uh, this is a take. Okay, this is a take. Now, is, what, is it back? What are you calling back? What do I call it? What? Yeah, this is the, our assignment was to be backlit. How would you prove that this is backlit? Well, now that's a good question. From where I was, um, it should have uh, it should have some kind of light, be some kind of uh, flare from the light behind it. Okay. Well, you got a backlit image here. This is your light source, and you got a silhouette here. If you look closely, you'll see the shadows falling on the floor there, that, and it's a backlit. Uh, right. But based on what you just said, I mean, I don't know if you were shooting it for backlit or you were shooting it for, uh, uh, were you following the assignment in terms of shooting it for backlit? It is backlit. Yes, I was following it, but this this comes out on my archive. So um, oh, okay. All right. so I wasn't good. really, um, you know, going into it then. Okay, try okay. to uh, do a backlit thinking of that. Okay. All right. Well, pulling, I mean, if it's even, if even pulling from your archives, this is your main light source. This is your subject. And you can see a shadow laying on the, on the ground on the stairwell here. Right. It kind of goes this way. So, but it is a backlit shot, but I just want to make sure that you, are, you understood how you got there and how you did it. What rule are you using at the point on this one? I would say rule of thumb that I don't know why. Okay. All right. You, you said rule of thumb, but uh, there's a, let's see if I can get this back out of here. I guess you're calling it saying rule of thumb is what you were trying to say, I guess is what you were saying. Well, it could be. Okay. What anybody else see the <laughs> rule out here in play? Uh, other than what he says, he's got a lot of negative space up here. That's a low key image. It could be rule. So it could be uh, uh, center it's, composition and symmetry. Yeah. There's some framing. Uh, now, how are you seeing framing, Jose? The trees. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of trees. No, you don't see them two great big trees on either side of the picture? Yeah, I see, I see some indication of them, but not they, they're not popping out like, frame, uh, like, a, like a very clear looking tree. Anybody else see that tree other than me not seeing it? I see something. Yeah, you know, the, 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 the tree's there, and then there's a, there's a big trunk of the tree coming all the way down to the side, going down to the ground there. Okay, all right, you could call that framing there if you want. Right. Me no see. Yeah, I don't see, I mean, I mean and again, maybe uh, just the way the my monitor is set up. Yeah, I see some, oh, there we go. Okay, I got the light right in my face. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I so that takes care of a little bit of that. Okay, <clears throat> uh, so I see some trees around it. Okay, uh, you could call that frame with the trees around it. What about leading lines? That whole light piece is going straight up. So it yeah, you got some leading lines that take and right the up steps up, and the steps they take you right up into. That's strong leading lines. Uh, again, what I'm trying to get you to do is just kind of point out some of the compositional elements there. 
Uh, and it's a nice capture, Barrington. I mean, even if it's from inventory, I mean, there's some. There, Appreciate there some, it. Wiping my screen off. Uh, but, uh, uh, and it does kind of, it puts the assignment. I think I would crop off this little bit of light over on the left hand side here. I um, mean, that kind of. Well, no, that's the. If the tree wasn't there, you'd have more light, but the tree is right there, come right there, right between that little glare on yeah, the left, it, come to the I'm right. What I'm getting at is that that's it's not really a uh, healthier image. I mean, I would just go for the center portion of the light here just to balance it out, uh, to become uh, just, I would just crop that out or tone it down a little bit and then have everything work off of this the center point here. Uh, the trees look nice now that I can see them, but I had to get a light on face to do so. All right, I got something in the chat box here. Uh, okay, no, I don't do that. All right, <clears throat> and at this point, let's go to, uh, any questions from Baron Ken on his image? Is that the Botanical Gardens? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, all right. So next up, let's see what we got here. Billy Richards. <coughs> Excuse me. Pressing and accounting for. Resident accounting for is uh, with five, 300 PPI capture, 70 to 85, the setting sun. I think I sent you a note, but we had a conversation on, on well, we had, I sent a note back. I, we didn't have a conversation, uh, but you call it the setting sun. The rule number is rule of thirds. It's a take process in Lightroom. Use masking to eliminate the glare and lighten up the grass, size frame, mat, and Photoshop can be. Mark four, 24 to one five. Shot at 75 millimeter. Okay, we're getting there. And we got an image coming up. And this is supposed to be back lit, right? Do here we go. All right, I had too much of it. Okay. Now this is up for discussion. Uh, and I Billy, I sent you back. I didn't you didn't get back to me on it. So I, I just went with what we had here. I didn't see it. Okay. The note basically said uh it is back, but lighting is typically used. Love the image, by the way. But lighting is typically used to illuminate a subject. This is a great sunset shot. Uh, I like the sky and the clouds and the golden color and the green grass, what have you. My shadow's a little bit deep here, but and that's okay. I don't have an issue with that. But when you use light, you're typically using your light to illuminate a subject, and that subject can be a person, it could be place, <clears throat> and, and in this case, it's more about sunset, uh, which has some pretty light here, but you're not illuminating a subject, and, uh, and this is basically meant to, this assignment was basically meant for you to use the light to illuminate a subject, and that subject could be a person, it could be a place, or it could be a thing, uh, and this, this is more about the sunset than a subject in this in this case a subject would be sunset which is the actual light source so i didn't i didn't read this as being um uh true to the assignment so to speak uh in terms of illuminating something uh, as we opened up with the um uh, uh with the shot of annie's dogs and she had light coming in from behind that illuminated the uh the sub dogs themselves uh and then barrington's image where it was backlit there was a subject walking across the light itself uh, people still coming in. Let's see. Where, where about the, uh, the a subject, a human figure was walking across where that was, uh, was, it was almost in silhouette there and what have you. So this is, uh, this is more to me. It's a nice sunset, but I didn't see it as a, as a backlit, uh, use of backlit lighting. Uh, and, and other, anybody else understand what I'm saying or, or how I kind of came to those conclusions here? <clears throat> yeah, I got a question. Okay. Got a question, Bob? Uh, I do have a question. Who? Yes. Uh, what? Oh, what? Sorry. That's a beautiful picture, and it looks like it's backlit, but in a not in the sense we're talking about. But what would you call that type of lighting? Uh, it's just a sunset. It's a sunset, and it's uh, and there's no there's really no subject. If this area here were lit up a little bit more, or if there's something here that reflected the back writing, I've got an image that came in from there. I, had, I think it was three people walking across a field, very similar, and the sun was behind them, and they got this nice little rim light around them. Uh, then the subject in this case becomes a people in the shot, and they are back lit. Uh, if there is something in the shot was illuminated by this back light. Uh, trees are not illuminated by it. The grass is not illuminated by it. 
this becomes more of a landscape shot with a sunset. Uh, sunset, a sunset being your center of interest, so to speak, if you will. So that's kind of what I was getting at. And I sent a note back regarding that. So I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, unfortunately, he missed the note. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, but uh, you're using light to illuminate something, and light can be front lit, back lit, or side lit. And then, in, in the case of this, where it's basically a sunset, the light source itself is the subject. So you can't use the light source itself to illuminate itself. You can't use the sun itself okay. to illuminate the sun. That's what I'm going to get to. Are you there? Hey, uh, Bob, but can you use that sunlight to illuminate the tree line there? Yeah, there's no tree line to illuminate. It's the, the, the tree, if it's, the subject were the trees, yeah. And, uh, and for well, some reason, uh, this is all lit up, but there's no light falling on the trees. It's just a silhouette. It's very uh, very similar to the, um, uh, the shot that uh, uh, we just looked at from uh, uh, Barrington. It's a silhouette. Uh, but in this case, if you want to call this as your subject, uh, when your subject is the silhouette of the trees, you could, you could, you could force that out. Yeah, you could force that. Uh, but what I want you to be able to do is understand is how to use light to illuminate a subject. And, uh, and again, the three ways that you do it, a backlit subject where the light is wrapped around, use some fill to open them up, uh, a side lit subject, and we had issues with that and a front lit subject, which is what, uh, what's due next week. But you're using lighting. In this case, you capture a beautiful sunset. There's nothing wrong with the, the oops, sorry about that. I was letting someone in. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the image itself, but in terms of uh, illuminating a subject, you didn't, we didn't do that. All right. I have a question. <clears throat> this is Flo, what's the question? Yeah. Not, direct, not directly related, but I'm looking at Billy's um, um, copyright. So somebody could easily, if they wanted to steal the image, they could just crop that out. Yeah, true that, yeah. You're exactly right. They could, I mean, uh, that's the risk you run anytime you use anything on social media. Yeah, so yeah, they could crop that out and use my image. Uh, now the file itself should carry his copyright information. Now, Billy, you still back there? Or you, let's don't go, let's don't go mute on me. Let's don't go. Let's no, I'm still here. I'm just okay. listening. Okay, because you normally have a lot to say, and I'm going to say, uh, you know, this is a uh, defend your piece of work, if you will. Uh, no, I understand what you're saying. You know, it doesn't illuminate. I should have had, well, I'm not, I, I should have submitted something that something was there being illuminated. Yeah. I was thinking I mean, about, the only thing I was thinking about was the fact that the sun was shining through the trees, which was on the other side which yeah. meant it was lighting, well, lighting up the trees, I guess. Yeah, you have the direction. But I understand what you're saying. You have the direction proper. Okay, all right, well then back to uh, Flo's point about uh, someone could um, crop this and call it their image. Yeah, anytime you submit anything on, on the social media, that's always the case, especially with screen grabs and what have you nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, the problem that you got with a screen grab flow is if someone were to copy that image on a, from a screen grab, you wouldn't get a very large file. Mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and if for some reason they were able to download the image, his information should be embedded in the image somewhere that talks about who's the owner, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that will happen. People will use your work. I mean, I grab stuff off of the uh, internet all the time, uh, but I'm using it for educational purposes and that falls under what's called fair use. Uh, people can go out and pick up images off the internet and use them uh, in a classroom environment or in a, uh, in a setting. Uh, and that's called, that falls under the fair use clause under, under the copyright protection law, so to speak. So does that help you? I'm trying to make sure I got to. Yeah, yeah. So you're, it's, it will be in the metadata, like Billy Richards will be in the metadata. Yeah, if you set his camera up correctly. Uh, when you go into the camera, uh, there's a comment section that you can add to it, and there's a copyright piece that you can add to it. Uh, and if you ever pull up a file, uh, if that file ever moves through the internet, they download it for whatever reason. Now, if they screen grab it, it won't be there. But if they download the file, and they're ethical. They'll see that uh, the copyright inf information is embedded there. You do that in Photoshop. You do it in Lightroom. You do it in your camera. 
And it's just a way of protecting yourself. And of course, if you see your image being used out there, uh, uh, you can cease and desist or you can file a lawsuit and what have you. But it's part of your cop copyright protection. That's what it's part of. Okay, all right, nice sunset. Well, the image, Billy. Uh, going on to the next one. This is Carol, homework for the week, uh, backlighting thing, make. Uh, as her take maker is make 85 millimeter D700 lens is a 24-85. Good, okay. Basic processing, Lightroom, Silver Effects Pro, Photoshop to size and frame, title Mr. and Mrs., center composition and symmetry. Okay, all right. And then we're using a piece of art here as well. A beautiful black and white, lovely image. Nice, nice black and white. Now, and this is uh, Carol. Uh, Carol, are you here? Yes. Okay, so you, you look like window lighting coming in from. Yes. Okay. And you got a little bit of a shadow in front of them. And then you got this nice rim light around the subject. Mm -hmm. What are you filling the front area in with? Or is this all natural light at all? Well, you know, funny you should say that because I did have my reflector out to fill. But when I started taking um, sample shots, it was filling in. Well, I, I was playing around with different settings and, and it was filling in quite nicely. So I didn't even bother taking the. Reflect the app. The room itself may be a very light colored room where it may be bouncing off the ceiling and bounce back into it. Yeah, and the, and I had to adjust those are shutters in the back, so I had to adjust them up because it was too much light coming in. Yep. And then I played with the background. I put a white throw cloth over where this is a couch in the background, and that made it too bright. Yep. So I took that off and just tried to control a little bit of that other light from yeah. not being too much. Yeah, and you did a very nice job I thought, in terms of the, the light ways coming in. It's obvious this is your main light source uh, and then it's got some kind of soft fill. And then the rim lighting around, it's a little white edge around it. The rim light is just beautiful. This is nice. And this is how you use back lighting. You got a nice edge around it as well. And, and again, it was nice in color as well. Was it? But yeah. I just thought the black and white was better. Yeah, the, the black and white is very nice. Very nice capture there. Uh, take, make, create. What to make. Know? Okay, and uh, this is coming in Barrington. Coming in. Uh, it's, uh, it's a make. Why do you call it a make? I call it a make because I, I uh, set it up and um, did certain things to get it that way. It's it's not a create because I didn't. Okay, I right. just want to, want to be able to defend your thesis, so to speak, and, uh, and uh, your rule that you're using. Uh, Senate composition uh, and symmetry. Yeah, I could, I could about that. That works as well. Okay, everybody get that so far? Okay, uh, nice piece of work. Any questions of Carol about at all? All right, quiet group this afternoon. Very Thank nice, you. Carol. Beautiful. Thank you. It is. Now, Very Carol, nice. I got a bunch of these from you. So this one says week four, and uh, I just dropped one in there er this afternoon that you sent again. So I don't know where we are. So let me just kind of go through them. You tell us where we are if we would. All right, Cal, you there? Okay. This is uh, your backlit shot. Let's go here. Yeah, that was an early backlit shot, which was really a mistake I sent in a little bit earlier. But uh, you can use it. The uh, the uh, sun was shining in the window, and you could see the uh, silhouette on the back of the uh, the uh, amaryllis plant. Okay, and uh, and you don't have a really a shadow to see. So how do you prove this is backlit? Well, the, if you look at the the outer petals, the the the, the inner petals, the um, the light is showing is is illuminating the whole thing, but the inner panels are darker. Yeah, it's translucent. Yeah, it's just translucent, yeah. So, and everybody's gonna right. see that obviously, right? You're able to see this. So it got very strong. How did you get the background to be like a pure white? Did you do anything to, to clean that up? Uh, no, I didn't. I, when I, when I, that was what you saw in my original uh, photo was uh, the Venetian blinds. I had, it was behind Venetian blinds. And the sun was shining through, and when I when I made that picture, you didn't see any of the uh, the slats at all. Okay. In another photo I sent you, the slats showed through. Okay, it was heavily backlit there. Okay, now uh, and uh, why doesn't the stem go all the way down to the bottom yeah. of the frame? There? Yeah, Be actually because that's a frame, 
and another frame and an outside frame. Ah, yeah. So you had a white oh. frame, a black frame, oh. and a white frame inside of that. Okay. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, just I was just kind of curious about that as well. So, but nice capture, nice, yeah. uh, nice piece of color. And this dark white background uh, makes it actually work. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, uh, take, make, or create. That was just uh, to me. That was a uh, a take, and it was just glowing one morning. I went out there, and uh, thanks to my brother-in-law Jose, who gave my wife those amaryllis, uh, and they're very pretty. And so it was. A, it was. A, it was a make. I didn't do too much to it to uh, Background, to yeah. uh, change it. Okay, and uh, and we asked about a rule. What did you say your rule was? To me, that center of composition. Okay, I mean it's borderline center of composition and symmetry. I mean I could go for rule of thirds. It's kind of pushed a little bit more to the left than it is to the right in terms of spacing, uh, but I can't tell where this mat goes. Uh, from an edge standpoint, you got a mat that kind of goes around it, it looked like. I really can't tell where the mat starts and where it ends here. So it looks like you got more white space to the right of it than you have to the left of it. Uh, and you could push center composition and symmetry, uh, but I'm looking, uh, uh, it feels, I don't know, it just feels kind of like a rule of thirds. Rule of thirds. That's what it basically feels like. All right, nice capture. Yeah, it's a little right. off center. I like the image. Makes a nice, makes for a nice abstract type of shot. Uh, George O'Keefe did some work with flowers that were just, I mean, incredible. Mm. The, the translucent love features. Love like your work. Going through. All right. Next up is Clarence Lee. <laughs> okay. Mm. All right. Like so we got a few of these. Let's see. This is camera on the night room, and I think these may be out of place. So this one here is this. Does this match up to this? This was a uh, week five. Yes it, yes, it does. That matches up to that. That's what that is. Exactly. All right. Yeah. All right. So Canon 80D, Canon 55 to 200, uh, 73 millimeters where you were. So you got a 55 there. So this week was supposed to be what, 70 to 150 or 70 to 8. What was the uh, lens? 80, 70 to uh, 85. 70 to 85. Okay. Thanks, Cynthia. Because I failed to ask that question on the uh, other images there. So you're right in the right in the sweet spot there. 73 open in Lightroom, auto tone control, crop sharpen, HDR merge, uh, pre, um, adjustments, Photoshop cams. Yes. Okay. And the image is here. Can you play with that mat again? Is this a black mat around here? I can't tell. It looks like it's almost kind of gray. Okay. So uh, and this is uh, backlit. All right. Yes, it was. Backlit, and if you look at the uh, the beer bottle cap, it's showing uh, light from the back, and there's a shadow, and, and, a, and a, um, a, there's a there's a shadow on and on the beer bottle also. It's on the it's, bird lap. Yeah, I can I can tell. Yeah, okay. can you see my cursor here? Because I'm just kind of pointing to your shadow here. Yeah, we see it. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Then there you go. And it's backlit there, um, and. Uh, Take no, it was HDR. It wasn't HDR capture. HDR and some stacking went on with that also. Oh, did it? Okay, very good. So you're making an image in. This is beyond take. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, your rule on this would be what? I put down three rules in that uh, in that write up. I forgot what they were. I think it was a one, two, and seven. One, two, and seven. Uh, we can back all center composition center the rule of first works and number seven patterns and textures. Uh, I mean, I see the texture, but rule of thirds actually works better uh, than two and seven. Okay. Uh, patterns and textures usually is repeating patterns. Now you're stressing texture with the light, the way the light is coming in, uh, but it's, it's not so much about patterns and texture. It's more about the rule of thirds. I would draw a, curve, draw a line here and then across here, then that would probably put me right about the rule of thirds here. And you might have some leading lines that kind of pull you to optical leading lines that kind of pull you down across the label there. So, all right. That, then, that, that beer cap was, I, I set that, the Fibonacci on that. You did Fibonacci you, on the beer cap? Yeah, if, if you can. Now, which way am I coming you, in? Side? 
you come you're coming in from uh, from that side there. Yeah, all the way around. I think it I was. come in right here. Fibonacci is going to wind up right about here if I do that. So, but you can I come in from this side. Fibonacci is going to wind up right about here. So I would okay when I wouldn't push Fibonacci on that one. Okay, we can leave that alone. <laughs> okay, <Kelsa. laughs> I give, I give. <laughs> I can't lie. Uh, hey, I'm easy. I'm easy on Friday. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. Uh, but anyway, it's nice capture. It's good detail. It's a good, it's a good product shot. Uh, lighting for product uh, shot, if you would. Black coming in from the top. Everything's nice and delineated. Uh, sharpness is there. Uh, and and I had the beer bottle had some fluid in it. I've been with some bubbles off of it, but I really you know that was gone. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I love the lighting on it, and you see, and the ripples of the shadows and what have you, kind of as they go through. Yep. Yeah, well, I wanted to when I want the uh, the light shining through the bottle was also important to me. I, I liked that the way it reflected off of the bottle onto the uh, the one side. Okay. All right. Moving to your next one, then. And uh, well, I thought there were more. Okay, well, let's, uh, we'll see. Uh, let me just make sure I got that before I jump into Cynthia's image here. Uh, I thought I had more from you. Yeah, from I sent you one in later today, but that's okay. You don't have to look at that one. That's yeah, probably that, that was a real back lip. Yeah, maybe I'm back, Maybe back toward the end there. Okay, this is uh, DR. Uh, digital capture 70 to 85. Uh, backlighting, she meant title is Ebony. Well, the images was captured on travel back towards the sun at 80 millimeter F9, 125, 1600. Uh, DR, why F9? Just curious. Uh, basic processing. Um, because that's the sweet spot on my lens. Okay, all right. So that's what I'm looking for. All right, I ain't mad at you. Uh, but she's using a 70 to 85 and using that chart. There's a chart uh, inside your, uh, inside your, uh, your weekly agendas. Uh, that shows you how to find the feet sweet spot. And uh, I figured this is very deliberate. When, uh, the work that's come in from Cynthia is, is very deliberate. Mm -hmm. So when she says F9, I'm sure she did it for a reason. She can defend that. Uh, Lightroom basic processing, object selection tool, inverse, adjust, hue saturation. Uh, and I want to ask about hue and saturation. What did you do there? Uh, lightness slot to black, remove spot size, crop canvas, or sizing sent to cloud. And let's go see what the image looks like. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, and it's obvious that it's backlit. You got the nice rim around it. So I can't see a shadow. Yes, I can. There's a little bit of a shadow rim there. So I'm looking at from coming in from the back there. And there's a nice rim around it. When you use backlighting, it tends to outline your subject very well. And it's used a lot for product photography. If you look at any of your product photography, most of the light is coming in from the rear. And they do that deliberately so that it's outlined clearly is what is basically uh, is, is done. Uh, and uh, and Cynthia, uh, this is a take, make, or create. What did you say on that? It's a create because I shot it in, uh, the, the light was coming from the window and it uh, the mask was not working in Lightroom for me. So I had to take it to Photoshop okay. and use the object selection tool to outline it. And oh, then that's where I went to, uh, you were, was wondering about the hue and saturation. I went to adjustments and I slid the slider to likeness and turned the background black. Okay, all right. I was just wondering how you did that. I mean, uh, you're using all of the tools and, the, and, and as you become more proficient, uh, you're solving problems in your image. And when you're, as you start to solve problems in your image, We'll start to go use different tools to do so. And everybody, let me get this off you, uh, and, and everybody will probably do it a little bit different. Uh, but the fact that you're able to use a tool to solve a problem is uh, that's the level uh, that I would I, I would aspire to get everybody to is like, it's an image, it's a problem I got to solve, what tool do I need to do it, as opposed to a format, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. Bring up your image, decide what you want to do, and decide what tool works. To, to get you to the desired output. It's a nice capture and a nice use of the tools. I appreciate the, the work that you're doing, I really do. Uh, and uh, I want to ask about this little star beam here on the corner here. 
Uh, is that by design? And when I say by design, did you put that there or was it just so? No, I did not. That's how it was captured. And I could have gotten rid of that. Yeah. But if you would zoom in on it, it's like it's a, a, a burst from the sun. Yeah. It's a point. It's, it's a specular. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty yeah. Could be a, yeah. Could be a, it could be an alien, too. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> He's and beaming the fact, down. And the fact that it was left there, I realized it was by design. So that's what I'm, I was trying to call that out. Design. Yeah, by design. By design. Uh, and uh, whatever you do inside this frame should be by design, uh, whether it's just simple composition or whether it's um, or whether it's uh, complex composition. Uh, but it's all by design. And that's what sets you aside from the next person, uh, especially from a photographic standpoint. Very nice capture. Nice, uh, nice smooth image. Love the image. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, can I ask Cynthia a Thank question? You. Good job. Uh, sure, go right ahead. Uh, Cynthia, what problems were you uh, having in masking and Lightroom? Because I want to know if it it's the same not, problem. It would I not had. hold. It would not take it. So yeah. I said, well, forget it. I think after three tries, I said there's more than one way to accomplish so then that's when I took it to Photoshop and used the object selection tool. Okay. I had the same problem. In yeah, I was time. having problems in masking in Lightroom, and I don't know why. Yeah. It wasn't working like it originally started working. But you know, after I updated everything, and that could have been it, my software wasn't updated. Yeah. Well, I didn't try it since then, so. Yeah. Well, the, the color of the under mat is very nice, too. It matches the image right it's very nice a very beautiful picture no yeah, photo thank you. okay that's uh, worthy of putting on somebody's wall somewhere and absolutely <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go to the next one if we would then nice capture time uh, dr and this is in from felix uh, did you get my did you get my picture uh who's that diane uh Di did, when did you send it if it's if you said yesterday it? yesterday yeah then it may be in here somewhere then. I'll just double check it. Oh, okay. Uh, it's probably in here, but let me see what I've got first, okay? Uh, so this is in from Felix. Well, let me answer your question, Diane. Yeah, I've got an image in from you. It may be out of, out of sequence. Oh, them. okay. No problem. They come in late, they'll sometimes drop out of sequence. All right, so this is from Felix. Uh, phone, my phone, use Zoom lens to capture photo, process in Lightroom, move to Photoshop for cropping, size of 3 PPI, canvas size, move back to Lightroom for export. Photo is a take, rule is 14. What is number 14? Particular color combinations. And I'll see what we got here for Felix. And this is a, a capture, looks like a sunroom. This is sunroom, Felix? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this is the rule is, uh, what lens, Felix, are you there? Felix, are you here? Did he go away or are you on? I'm here, I'm here. Okay, uh, now this, what we're doing we're, as a 70, uh, what was the assignment from a lens standpoint? Supposed to be, uh, what is it, 70 to 85? Okay, 70 to 85. So which lens is this? I, I didn't get that in your write-up. Uh, you just said use a zoom lens to capture. That's my zoom lens on my camera. Yeah, okay. Now you got a zoom lens on there and I wanted you to go to a particular range on it. And the reason I asked the question is it looks like a wide angle lens. That's what it looks like to me. And I'm just looking at from a characteristics of the lens standpoint, it looks like a wide angle lens. Uh, and you're supposed to be in the 70 to 80 range or 75, what was the number? I think it was 70, it's 85. 70 to 85 was a range you were supposed to be in. <laughs> So I couldn't gonna, get an exact number, Bob, to okay. be honest with you. All right. Uh, all right. We'll go back to look at that in a second because can, we can look at the metadata and see. But it looks like a wide angle lens. I'm, I'm not going to. It is. It, 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 it just looks like it. Uh, from a rule standpoint, what's your rule on here that you're using? Uh, different color, color combinations. On particular color combinations. Okay. All right. And I see you using the reds and the yellows and what have you. You could push mm -hmm. that. And then, of course, this backlit. I can see the shadows coming here. Yeah. And, and the subject that we're illuminating is the room itself. You know, all this is all lit up and what have you. Mm -hmm. and at some point, I thought it was maybe about the fan there. <clears throat> uh, and it is backlit. Let's look at the metadata real quick and see if the lens is what we're looking for. I have a question for Felix. 
Who's that? Who was that? Hmm? Who's that has a question for Felix? Talia. Oh, Talia joined us. Hey, Talia, how you doing? I thought you were working. <laughs> I'm doing very well. I just want to know what that plant is in the bottom uh, left. Okay, let's finish. Uh, let's finish our, our review of his image before we go into the whole cultural piece. Okay, okay. <laughs> you're very well because for some reason my computer is not. Uh, okay, all not right. Loud. This okay, like, uh, this looks like a wide angle lens, Felix. Like you're using this is your uh, this is your focal length is a 1.6 millimeter. So that's an extreme wide angle lens. This is an extreme wide angle lens, if you would. It, it might be a wide angle. I'm not sure. I was really zooming in with it. So I thought I was using the zoom. The, okay. The so what, zoom I'm I what, I'm, what I'm telling you, it is it, it is a wide angle. And you go into, are you, are you able to see a bridge at this point? Are you able to see the bridge? I just pulled up bridge. Yeah, uh, I'm seeing it. Okay, a 13 millimeters is an extreme wide angle. So it is a wide angle lens. Okay. So, uh, uh, so the seventy to one to seventy to eighty five, it, it wouldn't wouldn't meet that rule there. It's nice capture, uh, but what I'm looking for is uh, to use a seventy to melt seventy to eighty. I mean, you got three lenses on that iPhone. Yes, and I one do. One of the lenses would be uh, would take you into the range of seventy to eighty five. When you're looking at an image, when you're looking at an image, uh, this is extremely wide. Uh, you should be able to look at an image and say, that's a wide angle, or that's a telephoto, or that's a normal lens. You should be able to look at an image there. And the way this thing if, uh, opens up, it's obviously <coughs> a wide uh, And that's just what I was trying to point out to you. Yeah, I, I can see that now. Yeah, okay. But you should be able to recognize that now. And again, you should be, if you're going to use your cell phone, uh, make sure that you're going to your cell phone and selecting the category of lens that it is supposed to be. Say, for an example, 7085, there's three lenses on there. One of them is normal, one is a wide angle, and one is a telephoto. And the telephoto will probably push you in that range of 70 to 85 if you use that, uh, if you use okay. that particular the lens there. Yeah. All right. Uh, nice image. And now back to Leah's question. She had a question about which, what's that? Plan? That's a Christmas plant on the left. Okay. Uh, Talia, did you get that? I guess she's back at work. Okay, all right. Moving forward. Did you call me? It's uh, it's a no, Christmas plant, Talia. Huh? It's a Christmas plant. Cactus? Christmas. Oh, I want a piece of that. He was answering your question there. Thank you. I um, will. Okay, okay. <laughs> this uh, next one up, I think this is, who is this from? This is Michael's. Uh, I cut off the uh, right up there, if you would. Uh, this is Michael's image called Peacock Ray Rising, Peacock Rising, uh, Rule 14, particular color combinations, and Lightroom capture, three brackets, HDR, lens correct, adjusted shadows and highlights, Photoshop, increased vibrance and saturation, white and black canvas border. There was two of them, and I think uh, I, was, I was challenged with picking the one I like best, so I think uh, the one, this, this, this may be different for the different images here. So, but he did send the two in and I just picked one of them out. Here's the image here. Let's go back and, uh, okay, Michael, take, make, or create. This was a, a make uh, because I did the uh, sky. I changed out the sky. You, this is a replacement? Great. It's a create, it's create because I did sky. Okay. All right, replace the sky on it. Okay. Photoshop and it's obviously the lights coming from the back. I can see this strong highlight here. Uh, and is this an outside outdoor shot? It was an outdoor shot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got something that's filling in uh, the, the object, but it's, it's, it's obvious that it's backlit because you've got the sun coming in through these petals here and it's, uh, and it's being illuminated like so. Uh, so the, and your rule is what? What are you using from a rule standpoint? I did this uh, point of view, change of point of view is rule of. Yeah, point of view will work. You could also use rule of thirds. This seems to be your primary sub here you use rule of it was rule, rule number 13 change your change your point of view i just got down underneath it and then shut up yeah okay well, that definitely works there as well point of view uh nice yeah, that's a genuine lithonia peacock <laughs> lithonia <laughs> okay uh nice cat <laughs> nice and bright uh <clears throat> Did you look at that guy I mentioned to you, David La Chappelle, his work? Did you go just look at his work? But it, you know, the work that you do with these bright 
colors that you're using uh, uh, remind me of some of the work that he does. Very strong mm -hmm. colors, very strong, highly saturated and what have you. Um, nice capture. It does work. And uh, your lens on this is what? what but, lens but, I had to sell it. I had, I had a uh, 18 to 140, but I did set it to 70. Okay. When I took the picture. Yeah, so focal length, uh, 70 millimeters, 105. That's uh, kind of what I, was, what I was alluding to when I was talking to Fix is that you might have a wide angle to a telephoto, but you pick the, the uh, appropriate lens. And in this case, you pick the 70 millimeter. So that looks like a 70 but, millimeter lens. But Bob, is there, is there ever a, uh, I think I was oversaturating this, that it almost looked like it was a painting. Could that be a problem? Could it be problematic if you were... Or is that okay to do with a picture? Okay, if that's their particular style, a lot of your images do come in uh, what I feel are are kind of uh, not overly saturated, but highly saturated. Uh, and if that, but if that's your style, that's why I said go look at David LaChapelle's work, and you'll see he does something very similar. Uh, and if that's your so your style or your signature, there's nothing wrong with that. Somebody else may look at it, may look at it and say it's just overly saturated or it's kind of garish or it's kind of bright. But if that's what you're doing, that's what you're doing. Uh, and it's so is that another way of saying to, to make an image pop? Is that another way to do that? Is say like maybe saturating a little bit more to make it pop? Yeah. Okay. You can, you can make it pop also with contrast with the black and white slider. You can do that with the black and white slider. Okay. It'll pop off the page or you can darken the background. It pops off the page. Uh, but okay. if you're, if you're uh, into saturated images, uh, uh, for an example, um, HDR images seem to be heavily saturated. Right. Uh, if you look at some HDR images, that's a particular style. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you control it. Uh, your highlights in this case uh, along the neckline here may be uh, getting to the point where they may be a little bit bright. Uh, but uh, but that's just as you over time, you learn how to control those. But there's nothing wrong with um, with with oversaturation, if that's the intent. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah. now it may not look real to other folk, but that's your intent is to do it that way. And so mm -hmm. nothing wrong with it at all. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. All right. Let's go forward here. Next is uh, this is from Rhett Bad Hair Day. Rule number fourteen: color combination. Just calling that, and then uh, seventy millimeter lens. And aspect one one, which is a square, one three f ten, one third was I guess is one third of a one three tenths of a second or one third of a second f uh, f ten sharpening make it's a make she's calling it color sharpening, and what lens were at seventy millimeters? Okay, here we go. All right, Rhett, you here? Where is she? Rhett, she's sitting homeward, but she's not here. Uh, no, she's not here. Uh, this is definitely backlit. You can see the way the image is rim lit from the top there. Uh, uh, what I'd like to see is a little bit more of this illuminated, but that may have been by design. Maybe she wanted this to be low key, so to speak. Uh, that, uh, that masking uh, uh, software in Lightroom definitely will allow you to select that and brighten it up a little bit. But it's definitely uh, low key and it's a 70 millimeter. And this is basically, now this may get into create realm on it. And I don't like to discuss images if person not here, but this could get into create realm because I don't know if this is a black backdrop or she did something to change the backdrop as well. So, but it's a nice capture. It's, uh, uh, looks very similar to my piece of homework, if you would, uh, with the guy with the hair standing up, if you would. Okay. Uh, Castello, are you here? Let me just see if you got my hey, um. What time of day is it? Are we up on the break at this? Yeah, we we'll go to about two o'clock and we'll stop and take a break. The genre is thing. He was a green camera setting R6. Now you're shooting a mirror, mirrorless camera. Uh, F63 is a shutter, is the F stop, shutter 160. How did you come up with 6.3 as an F stop? Focal lamp 70 backlight. That was actually the low end of, of the lens on that when I had it on that camera. That 6.3 was uh, what's on there. Six three. Okay, I've got you. Yeah, it's one of those variable. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right room, basic process and cropping, analog effects. We're using some of the software. Vignette, Photoshop, clip framing, sizing. Let's see what we got. Okay. All right. Here we go. You know, another creative use of a mat, if you would. Uh, looks like you blurred the background out. <clears throat> I did. Yeah. Okay. So we're a take, make, or create. 
I said it was a make because I did add the blur the background, add the background from the vignette from analog effects. Yeah. Okay. So and, and color it a little bit. So you did some creative work back there is what it looks like to me. So you're replacing the background that was there. So it's a little bit on the create side. So how do I know this is backlit from a lighting standpoint? From the rim light on the actual leaves and so you and know, on top of the um, um, cylinder. Yeah, so I can see the light coming in from the top here, and uh, that's obviously backlit. Although sometimes it may look a little bit confusing. This one's illuminated here off this edge of it because the light's mm -hmm. coming right in the edge or what have you. Uh, there was, so, a, yeah, no, it was outside, so the light was pretty much everywhere. Yeah. But there was uh, the sun was behind it. Okay, all right. Then the uh, the rule that you're using, what is this rule you call Rule it? of thirds. Okay, so rule of thirds does apply here as well. Uh, uh, nice capture, nice work on the background. Uh, I would have liked to have seen this uh, this um, leaf here not split. The rest of them don't bother me that much, but this mm -hmm. one being split on the edge, either all the way uh, with this nice transition color or or some kind of way put this one over in the shadow and have all of it done. And that's just personal preference. This up here works because you, you get some nice lighting that's kind of coming through the leaves. And it's not so, not so much, but this up here works. Mm -hmm. This kind of, and it's I kind of like it, Bob. Well, I, I like the fact that the shadow was there and then the, the tip was illuminated. So, yeah, okay, well, that's fine. No. Yeah, uh, and what have you. Okay, so, and then the, uh, and where did you get this color from? Did you just match it to something that was in here or did you just select I'm, it? Right, I matched it to something there. It's actually a swatch that I had to add, but I'm, I matched it to try to match it as close as I could okay. to the uh, color. That's what I thought, because it's very close. Uh, mm -hmm. You can use your color picker inside of Photoshop mm -hmm. to select a color that right. you want your, 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 your accent to be. And just highlighting or pointing out that you're using the tools that you've got at your disposal. Very nice. Questions to, uh, and what lens was it? It was the, um, oh gee, 24 to 105, and I, I believe. The, Use it at the oh, yeah. 70 millimeter. Uh, it was at the 70, yeah. Yeah, okay, very good. So we got that, mm -hmm. we, we're, we're good there. All right, uh, questions to uh, share regarding French. Okay, all right, going to the next one here. This is from Theron. Uh, Theron sending an image, title afternoon walk, 300 PPI, lens 2470, edit in Lightroom, clean up in Photoshop, in Viviza and size, rule of offs, number eight. Okay. So let's see what we got. Go to the next year. Okay. All right. In this case, we got a very similar image to the one that Billy captured, except we got a sub here. And these are the three guys over in the right hand, the right hand door corner here. Uh, and then the shadows of that way uh, it indicates that your light source is about behind this backlit. So uh, Theron, are you there? Yeah, here, Bob. Uh, okay. So I was actually about set up to shoot the sun coming through the trees. Yeah, and, and these guys walk by, and so I thought, "Oh well, I got got some people here." So yeah. I just I just changed my view on it and got those, and and that's why I named it uh, 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 "Afternoon Walk" and that rule uh, rule of uh, rule of odd rule of odd. Okay, so you call them the three guys here, uh, rule of odd. You can also use rule thirds. You see, because they're about a third of the. Field. Yeah, I, I think could have got um uh, uh leading line too on with them guys. These lights going up. Yeah, you have them walking out of the frame, a rule of space. Uh -huh. Rule of space, they're walking. They've got space to walk into. Yeah. Uh, and if you're going to call lead lines, this line would have to kind of walk, push you push you into them as well. Well, I was just coming around from the back, Bob. They're coming this way. If I uh, use the guys. From here? I mean, yeah, from, yeah, from Cursor, yeah. They yeah, came around the back there. Yeah, you could do that. You could call that yeah. lead lines as well. But, uh, but I, like actually, I was shooting, shooting for the the sun coming through the trees, and like I said, they they appeared on me. So I <laughs> it. it worked out okay there. Right, this, right. This structure over to the left, you could actually have cleaned it up or cropped it out. You well, I, I I thought to crop it out, Bob. I said I cropped something out, cropped another pole out, and yeah. uh, I had so much trouble uh, uh, with, with my uh, with Photoshop and Lightroom and and uh, and getting the cameras in there, so. Okay. I, I, just, I, I, you know, the first night I teaching didn't have a camera on it, so I finally got it working. So I put the cameras on it, 
and I thought about it, but I never go back and go back and and and, and do it. Okay. All right. Uh, nice capture. Uh, lighting is good on it. And this is which lens are you using on 70 to 70, 70, 20, 28, 70, 28, 70. You're at the 84, 70, yeah. 84 mark on it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, questions to uh, Theron as we move forward. Uh, what time I is it? Get to the 84 mark on a 24 to 7. Say again now. How do you get? To the 84 mark on a 24 to 70 lens. That's a 70. It's a 70. I didn't say it for a 70. That's a 24 to 70. And that's a good question. Right. So how do you get to, you got a focal length of 24 to 70 and he's got 84. Well, that should, have, should have been 70. No, we're looking at the metadata. Oh, I don't know how the metadata got that, but. <laughs> so, uh, and he's got it set at 70 millimeters. That's focal length. Now, a, this is not a crop frame body, is it? No, no. no. That's just a, 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 That's a good tip question. Tip. That's a good question, Jose, because we're looking at the metadata. You, you guys can see this here. Yeah, because I make sure I check my check my uh, uh, lens, make sure it's on seventy. And uh, I, I I just I don't know how the focal length got it, uh, Jose. You tell me. Yeah, well, hold, well, I was always trying to. On occasion, when you get down close to <laughs> the extremes on a land, say it says it's all the way out down to 70, uh, and depending on the distance, you might get some variation there. For example, if I went all the way out to 24, uh -huh. uh, and uh, and depending on the distance, I might wind up with 22 or 23 or something like that. Right. You may get some right. variation in that. Uh, and I've seen that happen. This is fixed land. So but uh, that's a good question. How did you get an 84 out of a 70 millimeter lens? Well, it, only, I, it goes from 24 to 70. You can squeeze it out of it. Wrong. There's nothing well, I, I, did, I, I didn't go in the bridge to check, uh, uh, check that. <laughs> I guess I could have, but uh, I just shot put it on 70 and shot it. And uh, so a little bit over 24 70. So I, I, I knew I had it on 70. Yeah, well, that's what I'm getting at. It is, and you, you can't. According to the lens spec itself, it won't go both seven. So how did you get up to 84? That's nothing you've done wrong. Right, right. I understand that. Yeah. And I've had that uh, come up on occasion as well. Uh, and again, I mentioned that. Uh, but I've had it come up on when I've got a variable folk, a variable aperture lens. I've seen that happen. Uh, but I've never seen it happen on a, on a fixed aperture lens. So it's interesting. So, I mean, you didn't have any... Uh, Converters or anything like that on no, it. No, I, I, I don't have any converter. No converter, nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that it happened, but uh, from a seventy millimeter standpoint, that's what it says. Uh, we'll check that as we go along. But like I said, I've seen that happen on occasion. But I've seen it happen with variable aperture lenses, whereas you roll it back and forth through the focal length range. Uh, it may go wider or it may go shorter or the f-stop may change or something may change in it. Right. I've never seen that happen like that before. Yeah, uh, yeah, how, how would I never know if you would you win bridge on me, Bob? How would I never know? Yeah, okay. All right, let's, uh, let's stop and take a break and I'll just, I'm going to jump into the bucket and see what I've got in here. I'm going to stop the share and we'll stop and pause the record. Okay, welcome back. Second half. Uh, it's about to... 10 or so. Uh, we left off with, uh, who did we leave off with? We left off with uh, Theron. So let's pick up, I think Wilma's next up. Let me go ahead and share screen. Uh, but there's a few more pieces of homework behind, beyond that. This, I've got Wilma. Few more. There's another piece from Cal that I was looking for earlier. Okay, uh, this is Wilma. Wilma, yeah. are, you, are you there? My image is a take, she says. Okay. And use the 70 to 300 at the 70 millimeter uh, length and use Lightroom for basic processing. And here's the image here. And this is a back set of flowers. Is that what we're looking at? Yes, Bob. These are the flowers you hate. These are my dried hydrangeas. <laughs> well, well, you say I hate. I don't hate these. I said this another picture of these same flowers in the past. And I don't think you knew what they were, but these are hydrangeas. Okay. Uh, and it's, I mean, this kind of, uh, kind of reminds you of Billy's picture, but you've got a clearly defined subject here. Uh, and they're backlit because you can tell they're translucent there. Uh, where's my cursor here? Put my little spotlight out. There we go. Okay, there it is. Uh, so this is a take you say, right? Yes. 
Okay, and uh, your rule is what? Fill the frame. Yeah, fill the frame would work in this case here. Yeah, sometimes fill the frame would get in a little bit closer, but it would work in this case here. And this is your backlit, and this is what the 70 millimeter you say? Yes, I also used it uh, and took a picture of my husband and I had the glow and around his head and everything. Um, but I, I liked um, this picture a lot. Okay, All right now here's a case where we got at 70, but it's actually, uh, this is a full frame lens. It looks like it's on a crop frame camera. Mm -hmm. What I'd have to suggest. Send the actual focal length. This is where I go to get lens data for, for you guys. Mm -hmm. The actual focal length is 70. She's using a 70 to 300. And in this case, it looks like it's on a crop frame, a full frame lens or crop frame camera, what it actually looks like. If you, if yeah, you, my D, D3200. It's a crop frame, exactly. So mm -hmm. you, if you do, you, where you would get, you get 70 times 1.5 should give you something like it's all five. That's exactly right. Okay. And that's what I thought may have been happening with, uh, with Darren, but he's using a full frame camera on a full frame lens here. Okay. Nice image, nice capture. Uh, take, make, create. We talked about it being the take. We talked about this backlit. We got 70 to 85. And from a compositional standpoint, it's rather nice. Uh, it's just kind of a clutter of uh, dead hydrangeas. Do you call Beautiful them hydrangeas. hydrangeas. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. The now, question, Bob. Too, well, okay. The question, well, Bob. Yeah, go ahead, Billy. What makes it different from that? That's what I was getting at. She's got a subject here. This is a subject. And uh, the sub, this is a, you got a, a, a well identified subject. Yours was more about the sunset than it was about the subject. And these are her subject here is the hydrangeas, and the hydrangeas are backlit. So if I changed it from the sunset to trees, then it would have been different. Yeah, but your trees were not really a subject. They were in the dark shadow, they were dark shadow in the trees. So, but and and uh, the sun was the dominant factor in the, in the image there. Yeah, if you look at the lower colors, <laughs> you can even see that they're rim lit. Yeah, you got some nice rim lighting around them as well. But yeah, but I'm glad you asked the question, Billy, because it helps to clarify uh, in your mind what's backlit and what's not. She's got a clearly defined subject, and, and in your case, this this if you were going to use the trees as a subject you would have had to illuminate them some type of way and then move it a little bit closer. Then they come. Uh, keep in mind, your subject is typically the largest, the brightest, or sharpest thing. And I always say not necessarily in that order. In this case, the largest thing in the image uh, is the hydrangeas. It's obvious that the hydrangeas, is that right? Uh, yes. All right. Yeah. So hydrangeas is clearly a subject. You got Your image should have a center of interest. Uh, you, if you were trying to use the trees, there was, they were in shade, and the, the the brightest thing in your frame was the sun. So it became more about the sunset than it was about the trees that were illuminated or non-illuminated in your case uh, uh, in, in that particular shot there. But again, I'm glad you asked the question because when I first looked at this, I said, Billy's going to want to know what, what makes this from diff different. So I was kind of <laughs> poised for that question, if you would. So Billy, you understand what I'm getting at? Are you there? I'm here. Okay, okay. So you, I accept it. Okay, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, well, I, I do have a question. <laughs> I have a question. I took a picture of my husband and he was, uh, the sun was behind him, but the picture came out like over-processed or uh, like foggy. Like, you know, when you first turn your camera on, you know, and, and it's snowy, and then, you know, it's like foggy. So anyway, you couldn't see him. I'm just like completely yeah. blown out. Yeah. So Is that how you, it does when you do big, so then I went into Lightroom and I was able to make adjustments, but is that how it ends up as a raw picture that you got the sun behind you? Did I need to uh, do, what is, fill the frame? What is it when you fill his face with a flash or what do you do? Yeah, yeah. It's called uh, flash fill or fill lighting. Uh, in the case that you had, did you use your spot meter? No, what I did was um, uh, with the help of some friends, they told me how to do this. And I just go out and my camera faced the sun yeah. and my husband was in between, but his okay. face was just all, it was just a blur. You know. Okay, that sounds like a focusing issue to me. Okay. 
that sounds like a focusing issue. Uh, Cause sometimes when you, when you got a subject that's backlit and you're trying to focus on there's lack of contrast in the scene mm -hmm. itself. There's no, really, it's nothing for the camera to focus on. It Thank will kind of, it will kind of hunt a little bit for you. Uh, but it sounds like more like it was out of focus or didn't have anything to focus on. Okay. Uh, what about yeah. hazy? Yeah, hazy. hazy. That's what it was, hazy. Yeah, hazy would do that as well. And okay. that comes from the light that's coming at the camera, wrapping around. If you like, said light travels in the straight line, but sometimes it can wrap. Okay. And you get this kind of a hazy look as well. All right, so. thank you. Well, this I is also uh, heard that um, you should, your back's supposed to be to watch this, to the light, the sun, yeah, and your I subject in front of you. Yeah, that was uh, back in the old days when we were using film. They always want you to put the, li the light behind you coming over your shoulder so you get the nice contrast and what have you. But with today's modern cameras, you, can't, you don't need to do that. Uh, what would happen if she did use spot metering, though? Spot metering would have opened up from a shadow standpoint. Uh, and I can, I'll be in the situation. I think that 3200 was probably challenged from a focusing standpoint. The lens is a 70 to 300. Uh, and got a variable aperture going on there. Those, those uh, wide apertures help you to focus. That lens is not designed to be shot, to be used as a, in, a back, in, that, in that situation where it's a backlit subject, you got strong backlight behind it. Uh, so you may have some focusing issues. Uh, had she used spot metering, it would have uh, opened up the shadows a little bit, but that doesn't sound like what the issue was. It sounds like the issue was more about it being out of focus than it was about uh, about the exposure. That's what it sounds like to me. Okay. Uh, you have Thank to, you. You have to be in the scenario to kind of do the analysis on it, so to speak. Thanks, Bob. Okay, thanks, Captain. Let's go to the next one here. This is uh, another image that came in from Cal. This came in late. So I was wondering what this was, was about. Uh, uh, I think it came in this afternoon sometime. Cal, are you still there? You want to tell us a little bit about this one? Uh, yeah, this I'm one? still there. That was uh, truly a backlit uh, uh, photo of the Amaryllis. Um, I, like, I like the one you submitted earlier better than this one. Yeah, well, I, I, I see that now. It, I, I, I could have toned some of the, the light in it down a little bit, but um, that's what it was. The, the, um, the, uh, I, in one of my photos, you could see the, uh, the, the slats of the Venetian blinds in back of it, but in here, for some reason, I don't, I don't want to take it. I'm about to send you the wrong one. All right, I'm going to move on then. Okay, and this is from Diane. Yeah. This is Stone Mountain Canon 7200. Rule number three is four right inch and depth. HDR in camera, basic editing. Uh, Diane, tell us about the HDR camera in just a second. Because uh, um, you're using, uh, well, I don't know, this is Canon, I don't know how it actually works. Are you using one frame, two frames, three frames to do the HDR? The no, it's three frames, but it, it processed in the camera. Is that, okay, all right. Basic editing was Lightroom, Photoshop. So I was trying that out. Uh, sorry, place side and framing. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, so where's the HCR factor in here? Uh, HDR, I mean, again, I'm just trying to learn the canon here. HDR would give you a lot more detail, I would think, in the shadows. Um, well, well, also, I mean, I, I had several shots of them and I've had such a crazy day, couple of days with this because, I mean, the, the HDR factor is processed in the camera, but I still go through my, um, you know, basic uh, editing in Lightroom and then in Photoshop and what have you. And this wasn't the initial picture. Um, that I sent, this picture that I was trying to send, I couldn't send it because of that problem I was having with Photoshop. Okay. So um, I was talking to Jose, who helped me with a workaround because the picture would not go to Lightroom. It went to, as I told you, and it went to my desktop 
but then it opened up like a Photoshop screen to, to process, to do stuff. Okay. So then we just picked up, I just picked up another one of the pictures to try it. Okay. And, you know, and it went to um, put it in Photoshop and then tried sending it out. And by then I was like, it was two days of going through it. So Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> that was dropping yeah. nuts, too. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. then tell us about this image here. This is a uh, take, make, or create. Well, it's uh, only uh, create because I did change the sky. Okay, so you but, have a power replacement in here. Yeah. So, now is this but I had opened up some of those areas and, um, uh, and cleared out some of the trees from the building and stuff like that. So it was work that I had done, but then it was frustration. So, <laughs> so, so is this backlit or is this side lit? It is backlit. Okay. Now, how did you? How would you prove this backlit? How? Because yeah. the sun was on the other side of the mountain, and I see the shadow right in front of that mountain. Even though it's small, it's still a shadow, right? Yeah. Well, I'm looking at the shadow on this building over here, and it looks like the sun is over on the left-hand side to me. So I would call that tight lit. I don't see it as a backlit shot. I see the light kind of gleaming through here, uh, and it's it's pointing back in this direction. So you said the sun's well, it's on still the it's it's not okay. So, but it's still behind the mountain. It's still be. I mean, the mountain is pretty big. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not in the middle of the mountain. The sun may not have been like in the middle of the mountain. Okay. But it's still but, behind. Yeah, but it's behind the mountain to the left. So that's that to me. That looks like side lit. And follow the shadow. Here's your shadow. I take the edge of this building here. You see that? Yes. Okay. There's a shadow. That the edge of this building is right there. So if the if the sun were behind the mountain back there then this, there would no, be no shadow edge here. Uh, and I'm just following this shadow here. And, that's I, and here's another shadow here. Let's see if I can pull this up for you. Here's another shadow here. Right. Uh, and this, okay. this points to back over the left-hand side. There's what it basically points to. The shadow will always point toward the light, uh, to, toward the light source. Uh, I, I don't see it as back lit. I see it as a side lit. You could get away with side lit for this. But I don't think it's backlit. And again, uh, let's, so it let's has start. to be in the middle. I don't have that? to be in the middle. It's closer to the middle. It should be between <laughs> ten and maybe twelve. You know, from a clock standpoint, be eleven and twelve would be backlit in this case. But as it gets further, and I'm using a clock as an example. If this is twelve o'clock and this is nine o'clock, the closer you get to nine o'clock or ten o'clock, the more it becomes side lit. The closer you get to between 11 and 12, become backlit, if you would. And the but, same thing on the opposite side there. So this is this reads as a side lit capture, and uh, and 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 I don't have a problem with it from a side lit capture. But what I'm wanting you to recognize is that a backlit uh, a backlit image, you'll have a nice delineation around whatever your subject is. And if you look at this, the light is scraping the sides of the trees. So that comes in from that says it comes in from the side to me. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, uh, so now is it uh, take, make, or create? And you say you replace the sky, so that could be called a create. And the lens that you use was which lens are we using? That we're supposed to. I used the seventy to two hundred. Seventy to two hundred. What was your focal length on the lens? Uh, seventy-two, something like that. Oh, sorry, I, I did. I did miss my phone. Let me get out of this. Okay. And your focal at 70 to 200 and use, and it's at 70 millimeters is what it was. Oh. Okay. So, and this is a 70 to 200 and use it at 70 millimeters. So, so from a from a lens standpoint, 70 to 85 was the, was the parameter or the range that you're to be in. We still see in screen something is happening real funny to my screen. We're good. We're good. Everything is good. Okay, very good then. All right, but uh, and the, the, Diane, let me ask you this too. Why is it? You, it looks a little cool. This could be by design. I'm not sure. The mountain. Looks well, cool. I know. think I think uh, you kind of um, explained it in another question I'd asked you earlier about that HDR because it did process in the in the in the um, in the camera. 
And it wasn't what I said it <laughs> as it kind of changed. And I was shooting in shutter speed because it was a little windy. Yeah. So I think that's kind of what happened. Yeah. Uh, HDR it. itself can be a little bit blue. Uh, you can correct that in the processing in Lightroom. You can, you can always change your color balance there. Uh, but I thought maybe it was uh, you did it uh, bluish for what for a particular reason. Uh, but again, HDR can tend to be a little blue. If you look at some of the early on captures, the blues are just saturated and just yeah. magnificent. Blue. Uh, well, I think is, when I processed the first time, I kind of took a little bit away, you know, of that yeah. when I did it in um, <clears throat> Lightroom, yeah. but. Um, yeah, but, but it looks like you got detail in there, all of it as well. Okay, we'll move on. Any questions to Diane for or regarding her image? Sure, it's gotten. I got a question on on that blue tint. Can you uh, tone it down in uh, in mixing in your uh, color bar slider? Yeah. Bring it, bring it, warm it up a little bit. Yeah, you can warm it up. Uh, what I would do okay. is with this image is I would go into probably Lightroom and say select subject. <clears throat> and then uh, hopefully what it would do is try to select the mountain out. Uh, and then I would just kind of cool, uh, warm up the mountain because the mountain has a little bit of a reddish tint to it. i will try to warm that up. And if it didn't, you could take a brush in Lightroom and just brush the area that you wanted to warm up and then, and then do that. You could do it that way as well. Okay. Yeah, I wondered about that, Bob. Could you, you know how there's that color adjustment button? Yeah. It, it, Under it, HSL, you mean? Like you go going inside? No, no. When you pull up your basic tab in Lightroom, yeah. near the top, it and it makes, Lightroom makes adjustments to the picture for you. Yeah. And then you can go any way you want after that. You know what you I mean? mean? You mean the You're auto about button? temperature. The auto button. The, the auto, auto button. button. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I always do the auto button first. Yeah, but then you did the auto button on this? No, she did <laughs> Probably not because again, like I said, this wasn't the, the initial one that I have taken into. Yeah, but again, uh, in terms of adjusting the color on it, I mean, the blue sky is fine, the sky looks fine, the water looks fine, the tree line looks fine. Uh, I, you, uh, I would, to solve this, I would go into probably Photoshop and select just this mountain portion itself, and then just add some, uh, warm that up a bit. And then you'd have a, uh, then you'd have it, uh, or you could do the same thing in Lightroom using the brush tool and just select just the mountain out. The trees are fine to me. Uh, I mean, they're a little bit blue, but the mountain itself has got uh, looks like a polar ice cap or something on the mountain, what have you. So, but you could fix it there. If we have time to do this, I'll just run you through that and show you how I would fix it to give it a little bit more tonal range, if you will, but the overall image looks a little bit blue there. The water not bothered with, but the mountain just kind of <laughs> you know, But again, if it's by design, if you design it to be a blue mountain, then so be it. It's a blue mountain. It didn't, didn't work out. You could you, know, you could adjust the color temperature from an overall standpoint, from a global standpoint, warm the whole thing up, or you could adjust the color temperature just from the mountain standpoint. All right, let's, okay. let's move forward. We'll finish this up, and if we got time, we'll go back and do it. Uh, I, I know that you want to do that, Bob. Yeah, this is from uh, uh, from Flow. Uh, this is a succulent center composition and symmetry backlit. She says it's a make. Basic process including decrease the temperature of a cooler, less than warm image. Okay, here's a place where we're making some adjustments. Cooler, less than less warm image, and here's the image here. Okay, so. And this is backlit. Is that correct, Flo? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm trying to follow your light at this point. Um, I see a little bit of a loop here. Uh, I see a little bit here, a little bit here, but this is, but I now see the edge around here. So this indicates that I got some light coming from the back. And it looks like it's more from right in this area here coming across it. Okay. So I can buy this backlit. Uh, which lens are we using? 70 to 85? I think it's the 24 to 105. Okay, but which lens on that? Oh, um, what, focal length? Uh, 
The focal length is 105. Yeah, you got a 24 to 105, and you're at the 105 focal length here is what you're using. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, again, I don't know if this is being missed in the assignment, but we were supposed to be able to go in and pick a specific focal length. So when you're capturing your image, uh, instead of just taking your zoom lens out and ratcheting it out to whatever it is, you're, you're supposed to be able to set it at a particular focal length. And this was just to familiarize yourself with the lens. So 24 to 105, but instead of that 24 to 105, there are a number of lenses. There are a number of lenses and you've got ratcheted out all the way, but you, you mm -hmm. should be able to articulate that as well. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that was taken actually at the 105 angle. No, I was taking that the 105 focal length. Go back. Focal length. At, focal length. Okay, sorry. Go back and look at your metadata, and it clearly states lens is a 24 to 105. Uh -huh. of, of the lens that you're, uh, that was set at 105, that's okay. ratcheted all the way out, and that was okay. that was the whole point in it to be able to go uh -huh. out. That's what you're doing. Okay, uh, and it is like that. And is this a take, make, or create? You said something about create. Did you say create in this one? No, just make. This is make. Okay. And it is backlit. Uh, and what is your rule that you're using? And this is what? Uh, center, center, and, and, and symmetry. Uh, no. I'll, <laughs> Flo, I want you to be confident. You sound like you're guessing. Uh, <laughs> oh, it was in my, my notes. Center composition and symmetry is the best I can come up with. You have to rely on your notes. You should know what this is. Mm -hmm. uh, your notes said it was center composition and symmetry, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you, and you could enforce an argument for center composition and symmetry. I can see that. Yeah, but again, you're supposed to you're supposed to know this stuff when you do it. So, and I, again, I'm not, I don't, I hope I'm not coming across to sound like I'm beating up on you, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I just want you to be able to, to what was it, uh, our pastors used to say, stand flat footed on your thesis and put your sermon and whatever it was. <laughs> okay, I didn't, I didn't mean to tip you over. You said, no, you look, okay, I felt no like problem. You no problem. Okay, all right, uh, nice capture, nice, uh, nice tone range, just some delicate, uh, 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 captures of Elise, nice lighting. Uh, questions of foe, anyone for remove move forward? Okay, All right. and this will, uh, now did you pick up a piece of this, a uh, color picker to get your rim around here? Mm, yeah, I think the lightest part in there, I could have made it a little bit wider. Yeah, and, I, and that again, that's using the tools to, mm -hmm. to get that. And, then, and what I look at, and I'm looking at your images, is how much uh, how much are you how much control are you in of the image versus the image being control of you, and if you're able to use your tools, that's my main focus. Is once we get to some skill set, and uh, creating an image is all about problem solving and making it do what you want it to do. Nice capture, nice uh, tent, nice uh, tones and what have you. All right, going to the next. This is from Jose. This is. Uh, and Jose, I was wanting you to explain what this was for us. You said this is your baby. I didn't get any, uh, uh, what your take, make, create, what rule you're using. Is this uh, the right image? It was, it was just the take. Okay. I was tired of shooting portraits of my wife and dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting here in the chair and I looked over and the sun was coming through the window hitting the computer. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I said it's my baby because, well, I built it from the ground up. Okay. All right. And so I closed the bottom blinds, pointed them up, and the top ones I pointed down so the light would shine on the back of the computer. Okay. All right. And I took the picture, and that's it. Okay, so it's backlit. I see that got a nice rim light back here. I got this in the shadow here. We got the shadows down here, so it is backlit. So we have lighting there. Uh, what lens are you using? Eighty-five. Okay, he's got eighty-five. That's a right. Sigma eighty-five macro, but I mean, I, I didn't use it as a macro, but it's a really nice clear lens. And uh, I've heard people say you could use them for portraits and things. So I tried. Okay, so you're using, your focal length is 105, so you're in the 105 range there from a lens standpoint. It doesn't tell me what exactly what lens there. And this is your Sigma, which lens was it? 
Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I said 85, but it's a 105. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I was just I don't know why I thought I would say 85. So we're looking at 70 to 80, but that's okay. You got it. You did you tell a photo. Next week's assignment will, will be in the 150 to, or to further than that. So that was okay. 70 to 85 is a range we're looking to be in. Uh, and you got the backlighting going on here. And what rule is this? That's the uh, computer rule. No rule. Rule we're using. Busy <laughs> 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 <It's> smart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to. I'm trying to be serious about this. And he's like, yeah. Fill the like, frame. Fill the frame. Okay. Just try something in there, Jose. With computer. <laughs> right. Up to the group. Jose, what is it? Yeah, you got any questions to Jose regarding the image? What kind of computer is that? I don't know if it looks a like stereo. A... It looks like a stereo. No, something. no. Okay. Start at the top left. There are two DVD drives, right. a card reader down further. There's a card reader. Right. Go down mm -hmm. here, you have three swappable hard drives a one wow. terabyte, a three terabyte. And a 500 gigabyte SSD, uh, wow, solid state drive. And if I could lift up this top that's got the red fan on the yes. top of it, mm -hmm. you see the uh, desktop. I mean, fan, and uh, I got 32 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM. Uh, an MSI 5670 uh, video card. It's a computer. Yeah. So oh, where's, okay. your, where's your screen? Is yeah. It, right? Yeah. Yes. Right next to, go all the way to the left. All the ah, That's the end of, of the monitor. Okay. Oh, I see the end of it. And I see the yeah. keyboard. Now I see the end. And I see the keyboard in the corner. Over How there. old is this computer? Yeah, thank you. Thank you uh, 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 okay. Uh, it's uh, about five years old. But I, more than that. I rebuilt it about a year ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, put a new motherboard and CPU and stuff in it just to update it. Yeah, okay. All right, and uh, keyboard wow. screen are over here to the left and all this stuff. This is peripheral, it looks like. I thought this was some type of device that maybe right. held, <laughs> held a laptop, that held a laptop for, and keeps it cool is what I was thinking about. I yeah. thought it was something that you right. beat me up, Scotty. Yeah, me too. I, I use it sometime for time travel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jose, it's an interesting it's an interesting artifact so I'm gonna, we're gonna move on to that <laughs> uh, this is in for ramona we still got uh, a couple of these ago guys if you would so this is in a file the big uh, catch it's a make one one is aspect ratio 300 pixels per uh, there to the focal stacking. She says you might room bay on each, including lens correction, sync settings, light room, opens layers and Photoshop, photo line, blended Photoshop, edit layers, added frame. Okay, here's the image here. Okay. Uh this is 300 PPI, you say? Uh yeah, it is. All right, it comes across a little bit small to be 300 PPI, but we'll go on there. Uh, and look at the metadata and see it. I think you can see my metadata now. Yeah, okay. That looks like a small thing in here. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't have any metadata from you. No. Oh, I can see it on my on my computer now. Oh, but, but I'm not seeing it here. I just I know I I can see you're not seeing it. I, I just downloaded your image. Uh, I don't see that's IPTC. Well, I don't know what's going on with that because I thought I had fixed it. In any event, okay. Now, no, you're not going to see you're not going to see any evidence of backlighting. It's not there. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I was deciding to play with stacking, with focal stacking. Okay. So I focal stacked that piece and I was excited for the outcome. I don't know. I could have captured that piece okay. just with one shot, I'm sure. I know I could have, but I was playing around with, with the stacking, focal stacking. So that's five, so what that's five photos. That's five photos stacked. Okay, very good. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice. Using. 
What's your I said ratio? it's a one to one ratio, but it's not. It's a three to four. Well, that's your aspect. That's a one to one. <laughs> and, you, uh, and it, it can't be a three four. Look like a three four four three. It's a three four. One to one. All sides are equal. All sides are equal. So what rule are we employing? And except for that little too much space to the left, I'm saying center. Whatever that is. Okay, center composition and symmetry. Uh, typically, you'll have both on either side, the same thing on either side. Right, that's what that's I said. Except three, you center and what have you. Uh, what was the other thing? Backlit. We didn't do that. So no, I didn't do that. Sorry about that. That's okay. All right. Uh, nice capture, Mel. I see what you're doing. Uh, now, from a light <laughs> standpoint, this looks like it's in a light box, perhaps. It is. Okay. All right. So, uh, if but you... is it sharp? For is it? Yeah, it looks to be reasonably sharp. I don't see any problems with that. A uh, bit with sharpening and what have you. It looks to be reasonably sharp. Uh, <laughs> so, but again, from a stacking standpoint, uh, uh, you see you use five frames there uh, to stack them. It looks reasonably sharp all the way through, but you really don't have any depth here to, to kind of determine that. You got a little bit of an edge here and a little bit of an edge there. This is pretty flat. Okay. If, you were, if we're at an angle, then you could see the stacking uh, take place. Uh, but with it being straight on, uh, you probably could cover this with depth of feel and, uh, and came out with, say, with, the, with that sharp an image. So I can't, I really can't tell. I can't really say that because I don't have metadata data. And I'm doing a lot That's of- That's fine. I was, as I said, I was finally experimenting with, with the stacking process. I had not done that before. Okay, very good. All right, uh, questions to RB before we move on to the next one. I think we got one or two of these left. Okay. All right. And this is from Teddy. Uh, submit week four and week five. So last week's both used 35 lenses and, and, and site lighting. Standing call creeps here. Photoshop sky replacement. Remove the mil mildew from lower left right side. Disk patterns. And then week five is 70 millimeter. Fixed macro lens and backlighting. So you got 70 millimeter macro lens, Theodore? Yeah. Uh, Jose was talking about his. That's a Sigma um, 70 millimeter macro lens. Okay. Let's make sure I got these lined up. Yeah. Today. that's Yeah. Okay. These are the last three we got. So this is, uh, which one is this? That one there is um, the, um, the, the 16 to 35. That's the wide angle but i shot it at 35. okay so which lighting which one is it which assignment is it week two or week this, one, this is the last week's assignment week with side two. side lighting side lighting okay yeah and you can I'm, see the can you see the lighting on coming from the side yeah I mean, i'm looking at this building here i got light source up here somewhere so i look yeah at the here so you got some side lighting yeah. scraping the light there what have you yeah okay and that was the uh what was the assignment? Uh, Side lighting and um, 35 to 50 millimeter. Okay, which lens are we using there? This one here was the, the Canon um, 16 to 35 millimeter. Okay, and we're shot this at 35, focal length is 35. Yeah. Okay, all right, that yeah. works. Okay. And I put the fake sky in and um, down at the bottom right, that wall at the very bottom, that had a lot of black mildew and stuff, so I just kind of grabbed the color from the, uh, the other side of the wall and put it on there All to right. cover it up. Let's take, make, or create? Uh, create. And uh, this gray uh, border around it. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I'm going to start doing that okay. more. Right. I like that. All right, so it is side lit. We got the proper lens. Uh, what rule are we using? Um, shoot, uh, I put down um, patterns because all those, the lights on um, the windows there, the square windows. Okay, you could probably call patterns out of that because you got some repeating patterns. Yeah, a friend of mine said I to do point of view, but I didn't see that. Yeah, I don't see point of view either. You okay. Straight on and what have you. No, it looks like a nice afternoon or early morning shot. Is it afternoon? You know, um, Bob, this, we went, me, um, Robert, um, Billy, and um, Theron, we went the uh, last Saturday to um, or Sunday to uh, uh, Georgia Tech to that uh, garage, mm -hmm. and so we're on the, the the top level of the garage and so it's and a late around four thirty. Say again, a late afternoon shoot. It looks like yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
<laughs> exactly. So that matches up perfectly with the with the uh, color of the light and what have you. So that's that worked out pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So we were waiting for the sunset to do some night nice shooting, and but it was cold out there, so it's a good thing that we're waiting for the class or club to go out there because it's really it's really cold um, Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> you digress. Yeah, it All wasn't right. cold. It was cold. Yeah, nice no, 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 yeah. Billy, it was cold beer. Yeah, cold beer. All right, questions at the end before we move on? Yeah, I've got a question. Yeah. When you did the sky replacement, is it coincidence that the sky matched the warm tones, or did you use that sky replacement color adjustment? No, I don't know how to, um, to do that. Um, the color adjustment. I just went ran through all the um, the the sky replacements that they had shown, and I just picked the one that I thought. Okay, okay, I was just the best. Yeah, you know, well, that's what I was mentioning is that sky maps to the color of the light at that point in time. It worked out very. Yeah. Good. yeah. The only thing I mean, if we, if we use this as if I were doing this as an architectural shot, I would straighten the buildings up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, they they pivot in. So was that part of what you was talking about earlier today? With yeah, the panorama you got this, shots, you got this convergence here going on is what you've got. Uh, yeah. uh, there was a there's a program for lab will do it for you. DXL viewpoint will do it for you as well. But you can straighten it up. You could also probably straighten up in Lightroom. Lightroom has got a transform effect on the bottom of it there, where you could probably straighten it up as well. Oh, okay. I look at that. Photoshop's got one too. So yeah, they all got they all yeah. got. Objects like that, but it's nice, nice capture. I mean, it looks like nice. some nice leading you can, lines. You can, you can put up. if you zoom in, you can see inside the people's office. Yeah, I can see some people. Working. Oh, you pervert! Multitask, <laughs> 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 man. Who's the pervert? <laughs> we, we caught you, Teddy. Yeah, you little devil. Look at all those leading lines. Wow. Oh, building straight up. And those are those, those will not be leading lines. Leading lines take you into the room. this over here will be a leading line going in. The work going straight up are not necessarily leading lines. Leading lines typically take you somewhere, Dan. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily straight up there. Okay, let's go to the next one, theater. We got one more. Just got hey, here we go. More here. We All right. Black and white and in color. Look at the angle of view changed a little bit. Yeah, the two different shots. Um Start with that, that one there is, um, you know, actually I focal stacked it. I said I wasn't going to tell, but um, I took um, 183 shots. It was um, 61 HDR files that I moved from um, Lightroom over to um, Photoshop to process it. Yeah. And it took about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to do. But I was experimenting. I was trying to see if I could see, you could see the value of the, 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 the wheels and the, the frame of the bike, but I wanted the shadow that was being cast from the sun. I wanted to see if I could really bring that out also by the doing the focal stacking, but it didn't do it as well as I, um, it did it, but it just didn't do it as well as I had hoped. You're talking about the shadows down here on the ground? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to really find a way to really bring that out kind of like similar to what's on the sidewalk or the concrete pad there. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I wanted to see if I could, by focus, if that would help. It did a little bit, um, you know, overall, you know. Now is, this, is this backlit? Yeah, this, the sun is um, mm -hmm. is way, is behind it. You can see from the shadows that it's, the shadows. You know. What is this light on? It looks like you got a flag. Oh, well, this is a Bob, this is something I learned from Bob Blicksmith. Uh, you know, whoa, so whoa, huh? whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big time. I'm an expert at this, so I didn't mind doing it. I <laughs> used a reflector. Okay. I, I, I put a reflector up, I leaned it up against this bench and also a tripod and caught the light off the sun and shot it back to the bike. Yeah, that's what I was getting. It looks like it's a flash <laughs> or some type of fill light you got going so, on. Yeah, so yeah, I used a reflector to, okay. and so that's. Way I was able to get the lighting on that side. Yeah. Okay. So what lens is it? Seven to eighty-five. Say again. Which lens are you using? This one here I use the Sigma um, seventy um, seventy um, millimeter macro. It's the same lens I used when I first started 
the class when I was taking those flowers, pictures of the flowers and stuff. Right. It's that same right. lens. Okay, it looks fairly sharp. Looks pretty good. Yeah, you can bring it up closer. You can see some. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Here you go. We're starting, to, I mean, we're starting to kind of get a little bit. Yeah, lose a little bit there. Detail of it, yeah. But it looks, it looks fairly decent. It's a little bit warm. I don't know why it's warm. Uh, I tend to want to make uh, inanimate objects a little yeah. cooler than that, but it's a nice, nice capture. Yeah. The background mm -hmm. on this rail back here, I don't know if you could have blurred those out or something like that. But you oh, that would have been too much work. Shoot. You were actually stacked. I was trying to do a, a backlit picture. I wasn't, I would have been, that would have taken me a whole. Okay, so, all right. All right. Any oh, questions? Oh, Daddy took 180 pictures. That's yeah. what I'm saying. The whole, that's exactly my but point. But you know, but with that mirrorless, is so fast. Even the HDR it just goes zip, 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 zip. Yeah, but this is very quick. Pictures, you still got a process. You said it took you an hour to process it. Well, I did it yesterday while I was in class, in your class. I was yeah, doing that so, at the same time. But again, you still got to make a picture. <laughs> if it was a stacking exercise, just having this all sharp in the background is fine. But uh, if you're actually making a piece of art or a piece, of, I would have blurred that out and just focused on the yeah, I started to. Um, I shot that three different ways. I shot it with the uh, as uh, f stop 2.8 and then 5.6 and then ultimately at um, 8.0. Whenever I do stuff, I don't really, I mean, I'm just trying to learn and, and figure things, so I don't mind trying different ways. The 2.8 2 didn't do as well, and the 5.6 did a little better, and then the 8 did better than the 5.6, so that's what I went with. So, okay, all right, yeah, let's go to the next one. Uh, this now is that's, black, the black and white version of it. Yeah, same. that's pretty simple. I just took a shot with the same, um, it was, I was standing closer to it and I was pivoting down a little bit. Yep. And um, I just took one shot with the, um, the same um, lens, the Sigma uh, 70 millimeter. Yeah. And so, and you know, I was able to catch the shadows yeah, and and you can see the 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 sun shining on the water, you know, on the other. This is the the bike was taken at um, Panola Park. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very cool. All right. Any questions at the end before we move on? I think that was the last one. Uh, yeah, we're we were on to the last one. Not my moon. One. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, moon. I was working on it at some point. All right. Questions to uh, to uh, Theron. I'm Theron. Uh, Teddy. Okay, where are we? I'm gonna uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, this is Cynthia. One thing I noticed when doing this exercise is that that sun moves quickly. And so, Teddy, with that many shots, by the time you got to the end, the sun had already moved by. Yeah, you know, so when, it, you're doing, when you're doing it, backlit, you have to capture that image and capture it. You're two thousand percent correct. You know, huh? that was the problem. You're two thousand percent correct. That was the problem I had when I was shooting it with the 2.8 and then when I shot it at the 5.6. So when I shot it at the 8.0, um, I didn't, I just did it very, very quickly. I have a little chair that I can sit on and kind of like, and I just did it. I was really solving. I was just, you know, just doing it real quick because it does move a, pretty quick. A great exercise, Bob. Yeah. All right. Very good there. All right, uh, we're about out of time. I guess I'll take the hand if I also messed up. But thanks, guys, for your participation. Uh, and I hope you're learning how to use your tools. That's what the whole point of this whole thing is that we're experimenting, learning how to use the tools. Uh, one of the things you do is uh, is you find a problem and you solve it. You, the, prop, the, the way you solve that problem is by using your camera, your lights, your whatever your, you've got at your disposal. And it's not always just about going out and taking a snapshot of something. But it's, all, it's also about understanding the tools that you've got in your arsenal and how to use them. So that's all I got to say at this point. It's almost a clock. Ms. Donnell, are you there? She's going to close us out. All right, Ms. I Ms. am Ms. here. Ms. I am here. I am here. Okay. All right. Have a great weekend, people. I'm done. All right, everybody. Enjoy your all weekend. Right. Stay safe. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.